Welcome to Earth Drama Episode 3. This might be the worst one yet because I really don't have a plan. I usually at least have an idea of the title. Maybe not the first one though. I don't know. The last episode was pretty self-indulgent. I talked all about my ADHD and I was, (laughs) now that I think of it, I feel like I was really just complaining into a microphone for almost two hours, Uh, but I needed it. This is my therapy now. And it's actually a miracle that we're here for the third week in a row on time. I didn't plan to have my podcast come out once a week on pretty much the same day. Um, The last week just happened by accident. And uh, and then I thought, okay, might as well stick to it. Like this is the one thing I'm sticking to. Actually, I'm trying to go to the gym every day, but I haven't stuck to that. So this is like one of the things no one cares. Like no one gives a shit. Okay. First of all, I'm trying to just do this for myself and not be embarrassed by uh, like no one asking or wanting this and me being all like self-indulgent or whatever. Like it's, and it's probably annoying just to hear someone be self-critical all the time, like how I am at least in the podcast. And so I, I'm trying to get over that, but it's just like weighing on me I don't know. This might suck so bad, but okay. I It's just like, I got to get that out of the way before I'm just self-indulgent in like talking about my life. It, like I, cause I could do this, I guess, and then not post it, but it's not as therapeutic for some reason. Right. So, and this is just like me practicing, putting things out there that aren't perfect so I can not care because I'm really just trying not to care what people think. It wastes so much of my time and my energy to care what people think. And so for me, this is honestly kind of like exposure therapy where I put something out that's not edited at all. Like I can't change it. My rule with the podcast is to do zero editing. And uh, so I don't even film myself. I just record the audio which annoyed me. Like I wanted to be so put together and do the podcast thing that everyone's doing these days where they're doing like video podcasts. But honestly, I get annoyed now at video podcasts because the audio only was the best because like who has time to sit there and watch a two hour podcast? I don't know. People are doing that, I guess. Uh, But for me at least okay, I would try to get away with just listening to it. And then they make, there's things happening that then they don't care anymore to like describe what's happening. Like when it was just audio only, some of them care to be like for the audio only listeners, like this is what's happening or whatever. But yeah, I just, I don't, I hate the urge to like look at my screen to just know exactly what's going on in the podcast that I'm listening to, but that also has full visuals now. So it's annoying. So you know what? I thought (laughs) for, for, for the 20 people that listen to this, I thought I would spare you the time to not have to look at your phone to have like an audio only podcast, but it's not good for promotional purposes. You know, everyone's making the little TikToks, YouTube shorts out of their podcasts. They're making little clips. I'm not together enough to even do that right now, like the editing of it. So it's whatever, but I'm like, oh, when I get my shit together in the future and then I want to do that, like I'm not going to have video to do that. But then I thought I could do it my own way, which is just put visuals like photos of what I'm talking about and then it'll be subtitled and yeah I don't know I'm really really trying to not be like everyone else and conform but then I have these beliefs still that it like it just it won't work out unless I do the popular thing that everyone else is doing like who wants to downgrade from seeing the person talking and that type of visual to imagery visuals, but honestly, maybe it'll actually work for the neurodivergent type of people that 
can't even fucking focus on what the person's talking about when they see their face and their lips moving. It's like, you have to look away to focus. It's like too much stimulating this. I don't know. And then like, are the images going to be too distracting? Like if the images go exactly along with what the person's talking about, then it'll be just even more easier for, I would think for me, I'm someone who's ADHD again, ranted about it for like almost two hours last episode. I just feel like it's becoming my fucking personality right now. And I like, I'm just having, let's just say the neurotic thoughts that let's just say the neurotic thoughts that are coming up right now, because this podcast is about, it's supposed to be about my own neuroticism, but also I want to talk about cultural societal earth drama stuff too, but I've been having to go into digital detox. So I haven't been doing that. Um, okay. I just lost my train of thought of the first idea that I was going to say this, is what happens. Okay. Oh yeah. I've been <laughs> embarrassed, self-conscious about making ADHD, my personality, like doing an entire episode on it. Last episode at the beginning of that episode, I was talking about how I hadn't actually embraced having it. Uh, like I had imposter syndrome about it still, even though I did get like, a formal diagnosis from a doctor and prescribed medication for it. And I did take five milligrams of Ritalin today. And then I'm having like imposter syndrome about that, that I'm like doing better with cleaning and organizing because of that. And I, like, I want it to be me and not the medication helping me. Yeah. I still have a lot going on with that. Trying to overcome the shame, I guess, in ways, but five milligrams is not even the prescribed dose. It's half of what I was prescribed. It's like not, it does nothing. I like to believe, I don't know. I felt like it made me more chill. I did stuff before I took it. So I had some matcha. I made a matcha smoothie this morning. And so I was relying on the caffeine from that to like motivate me and stuff. And then midday I took a bit of the Ritalin to like help me keep going because like I had just been in a slump like the main thing I was going to talk about today if I'm being really self-indulgent to talk about myself the whole episode that like maybe other people can relate and I also okay I'm trying to I'm going to spare you guys maybe some of the frustration or pain that you're currently feeling right now in your life because it could be what it was for me the last however many years Obviously it was a combination of things, but like the biggest thing that I feel like has been fucking up my life is my environment. It sounds really simple and annoying. Have a nice environment. Have a good, have nice things around you to help you be more productive. Like it's just so stupid sounding because of how simple it is, but it's actually a lot goes into it. Okay, it's one of the things is aesthetics for me. I hate looking at disgusting tan colored walls. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking in the 90s or early 2000s or whenever that trend was the dark tan color on the walls um it just it disgusts me and I I can't I just keep looking at it um because I haven't gotten around to painting the kitchen living room area but so at least I've I've been changing my bedroom space but it's been taking absolute eternity absolute eternity to change this thing about my life because probably the years it had taken maybe of me, I don't know, collecting things too, like not trying to collect things, just the stuff was weighing me down, the physical items and things. I, I will get rid of my stuff. But it's my, I don't think I've ever actually organized my things in my whole life. And maybe I won't have ADHD anymore, guys, when it's organized. Like, I feel like anyone living their life like me would have ADHD, would feel ADHD, trying to manage, like, not having places for things and just drawers of junk galore. They would get very confused and forgetful 
on a daily basis, but honestly, it's not even my fault. It's not my entire fault whatsoever. My partner, Sean, has been a hoarder at least the amount of life that I've lived with him. When I first moved into his house, he had his own junk and clutter, like this in the basement here, the other side of the basement. Um, What the fuck does it matter? What does the specifics matter? I don't know. I'm not, I'm in a nice organized studio space that we worked on to get, to have a studio space, whatever. So it's like, on the other side of this wall that was constructed recently, there is just like absolute mayhem craziness. He was collecting bins of items for, I think he said like 20 years. And his ways have overwhelmed me for so many years, like the seven years we've been together. But it's funny how I stopped trying to get him to change And then he just wanted to change this on his own. Like, I feel like that's how it always goes, right? Like I did realize, well, there wasn't really much budging. Like I just had to deal with it. And it it was making me just sad. My brain could not compute the amount of items trying to sift through what was mine and his. And like, he just did not want to get rid of things. He has OCD stuff going on and he like with me he didn't even want me to get rid of stuff that well if it was my own he would worry that something of his was maybe mixed with something in my I don't know um when he was young his like I don't know if I'm supposed to speak on this because it's not my family it's his but sorry Sean you picked up this trait and you know and we've talked about it like his mom, I think, was like a little bit OCD. Uh, like, I don't know. She was worried about throwing garbage out. Like, she would, I think, go through his garbage to make sure he didn't throw out anything important. Like, that does happen. You know, sometimes you throw out something important happens. But I think it was like this double checking thing. And then Sean, um, it's just he had like a really intense version of that. And there'd be stacks of old newspapers And I'd want to just freaking get rid of it. And Sean's like, no, 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 no. I need to go through every single one. Like I need to go through them all to make sure there's not like some paper that I don't know how that I need or, or maybe something that maybe he had written some of his own thoughts on a piece of paper and it got stuck. Like something that might be embarrassing to him that if someone read it, but who the fuck is... (laughs) OCD is not logical, obviously. Like I have my own versions of it and my own themes, but it's, yeah, it was just, uh, it was a lot. It was a lot to deal. And then Sean had, he was in denial of, I, I feel he was in denial of the hoarding problem when he would try to get me to hoard with him. I felt like he, ins- he just insisted on this quote bin method And it was just putting, it wasn't actually going through things and getting rid of stuff and sorting out the garbage and junk. Like he just put everything in a bin and then it's, he was like, I'll get to this at some point. But the bins, I think he, he, he would be defensive right now if he was here. He's, he's going to come on the pod at some point, but he'd be like, Hey, no, that was a great system. And I did go through them eventually, but okay. He went through them, but he also threw my shit in the bins. Like sometimes he'd throw my stuff in the bin. And then I'm trying to, God, I can't even find my stuff when it's not in a random ass bin that I didn't put it in. And so that was just frustrating when it was like, oh, where's this thing of mine? Where's that thing of mine? Like, mind you, my stuff was not really put away. Obviously it was not um, organized, but yeah, the bins just didn't, it just procrastinated the issue because like, okay, maybe Sean's things that he put in the bin, maybe some of his things like he just didn't want to get rid of yet, but he wasn't actively using, but I was still actively using items, some of them that he would put in the bin or I'd forget about them and probably like buy a whole new thing. And it just like did not solve our issue. But yeah, he, when the, when the junk got bad and there was like not even places to put things and it was just confusing and stuff, I think he would just like grab a whole drawer of junk and like put it in a bin, but then we actually needed stuff. And then yeah, we just buy new stuff. Okay. So that's what was happening 
for like seven years. And finally now Sean just decided to go through his things. I had started renovating my bedroom, painting it. And then that kind of inspired the studio space in the basement to like renovate this the unfinished basement into like having like a studio space and painting down here and stuff and then getting flooring installed. And then furthermore, I think when Sean had this big, huge studio space to like put so many of his things and organize it, then he on his own accord was like, Oh, I'm going to go through my bins now. Like I'm going go through all the things. And then he's been actually really into, um, doing the whole entire house. So we currently have a garbage, tin what's it called it's like a massive metal unit that was dropped off the house for garbage to to just like gut the whole house of the junk and stuff um we had some big items too that it's helpful to get rid of like humongous um not humongous but a couch like an old mattress like these old bike that's like broken like these things that we just would never have the freaking wherewithal to take to the actual dump I like we're both lazy you could say we're anxious people uh and I don't know it's just like so much easier Sean's done this before like he so he has okay so the hoarding what the frick did he even get rid of the last time he did this he did this when I wasn't here we had a bit of a separation and he that's when he threw out some useful things like he threw out a perfectly good bike that I could use but obviously okay, we weren't together so of course he's gonna like throw out his sister's bike that he wasn't gonna use okay I I forgive him but um he threw out stuff but I don't think he he did not go to the level to the depths of the bins this time that he's actually going to like the bins that have been here for like 20 years like I think he must have thrown out some big things and maybe just regular household garbage. The garbage thing is my task and I've been behind the last however many weeks I was out of town, but yeah, we're just disgusting, filthy people. Okay. We don't make garbage day a lot of the time. And then the garage is just like filled with, with household garbage. In addition to just like all the junk stuff in the house, it's just, it's a literal burden. It's, and I'm sure there's other people in this scenario. I don't know if anyone listening is in this scenario or has been here, but it's, it just sucks. It's just, um, it's, it's also just like the biggest demotivator in a certain way. Like when you think of it as a whole big thing, especially you just think of how, you feel at least you're like, I just, if I, you know, did all day, I don't know, trying to expel the garbage or the recycle, the bottles in the garage of recycling that we didn't take to the bottle depot or whatever, like you would just be like, Oh, I wouldn't even make the smallest dent. I don't think that's necessarily true at all, but that's sometimes I think that was our mindsets. And now that we've been going to the junk, like I, <laughs> The garbage bin thing, the huge garbage unit thing has been here now since Friday. What's today? Sunday. I only just started, I only just started getting my shit together today. Sean just wanted to get it for his timeline of things. I was still trying to get my bedroom done. I was like doing the, um, I still, I just have to do like the baseboards of my room, but I have to measure them out and saw it. And I don't, Everything is just crazy. And who even cares about my life? Like, I don't know. It's just my own therapy again, right? But what this is what happens when I don't have a freaking plan and I just sit here and just talk about nonsense. Like maybe, maybe this could be a podcast for falling asleep too. It could be one of those things like a sleep story. I've been listening to those lately. So this is the podcast for if you want to fall asleep because it's just like boring as hell. It's just like a random person talking about things that are, it's very detail oriented, but it doesn't get to the point. That's what this podcast could be for falling asleep too. But, um, okay. There was like one point and 
yeah, I already said it, I guess. It's like how much the environment makes a difference. And, but I've been stuck in, I'm 30, I'm 30 years old. I do just feel like me and other people, if you grew up in an environment that was chaotic and then also your parents or at least one of them or the person that ended up being the one you were still living with if they also if they had the tendencies of the hoarding and stuff right like I feel like that so easily gets passed down and like there's just these habits too that it's so easy to it's so easy with all the things we own and just everything that comes with modern life. Now it's the technology included, but just managing life as an adult, household things. I don't, I don't know how I would ever own my own freaking home. Sean, my partner owns his home, but he has a hard time like keeping up with the house stuff. Like we do kind of work together with that. Like I remind him of certain things with the house or we just don't know to also do things. Or I think I'm like, are we supposed to check things so we don't have a gas leak? Probably. There's just so many tasks. I feel there's so many tasks and I don't know if it's just easy for people that don't have ADHD what I, what I think it is, it's like when you've gotten into the rut of like, you don't have the methods and the strategies and the systems like developed for the tasks. Like I, I fully have to develop systems and stuff that I've learned, which is like how I execute tasks, like or how I prevent my space from getting messy. Have not done this. Ever. Like this is gonna be the first time I'm actually gonna be doing that type of a thing. I've always just been mess, chaos. I will eventually end up, you know, cleaning my room, but it, my room would either, I just could not maintain, could not maintain. It would just be crazy, crazy messy or just cleaned it. And then the next day it's already messy, but I need to develop the system specifically for me. There are people on YouTube that give good tips and things, you know, like that. But but you you know your own self the best and your very specific habits. And you can get inspiration from the people on YouTube giving you tips. Some of the things they recommend you might do exactly to a T. But for me, what I've realized is my whole 30 years of my life, I feel I have been continually trying to copy other people, to do things like other people, like not being creative. And I feel like coming up with the strategies, I've been coming up with them in my head right now because I don't have a space to actually fully execute them because my room is not set up yet. But that part of my mind, I think like, that's what just, that is what like gives me zest for life or helps with my depression, boredom symptoms is problem solving, creativity, figuring out the best way to do a task. So one example is when my room's set up, I'm going to get, I haven't fully developed all the details of this strategy yet but one of my ideas because I think so many of us like ADHD or not you just tend to not put your clothes away a lot of the time you just don't want to fold and put your clothes away and keep it all tidy and clean so I'm just going to have a basket for clothes that aren't dirty at all it's just for clothes that I need to put away I that's I probably got that from somewhere else it's such a basic freaking thing like I I did not discover that I was not the inventor of the clothing bin situation to, but I thought of it one day, whether it was like I had seen it in a video and a seed was planted. And then another day I was like, Ooh, this thing. I know I did watch a video about a girl who has a chair for that. She's like, this is like my clothes chair. Like she sort of just puts the clothes on this on a chair, but I'm going to have a full on basket. I think 
And, but yeah, it's <laughs> figuring that one thing out. is just like annoying and stressful, honestly, because <sighs> how big of a basket do I get? What style what system does the basket have a lid does it like and it's got to go with my room because excuse me I'm just I'm being so careful with everything I buy now and I am very picky but at the same time I haven't made everything coordinate because I just buy random things that don't go together and that my brain doesn't like that it like it just really, it helps me tune out my distractions in my environment and be productive, get my work done. I feel when things don't stick out or just, there's not like ugly things or think this, cause I'll stare at an object. I'll be like, that shouldn't belong there. Like that color is not okay in this vibe of this thing. Like I basically do that with everything in the house at this point, because Again, the tan on the friggin' walls, it's disgusting and I hate it. And I just, I go to the bathroom and I take a shit and then all I think about are sucky negative thoughts about the, like all I think about is like, I hate, God, I hate that color. Like I couldn't hate it any more than I hate it right now. And I can't wait to, you know, change it. Like at least if there's some positivity in, this doesn't, it doesn't have to be this way, but I'm living in the future. And then I'm feeling like, I just want to be okay in the meantime, in that environment, but I'm not, but that's what motivates people to actually make change and do something about it. But I don't have that one scheduled in because there's like so much, so much that's just necessary to get finished before I think of like then painting the bedroom or the, the bathroom. Like I got to get the bedroom finished. And, and then I have this shelf that I keep talking about on my channel, like on my live streams, the shelf from Ikea that's going to change my life. Um, that's so close to being built. I just have to finish the baseboards in my room so then I can build the shelf and have it be against the wall in the bedroom. But, um, so yeah, it's just the systems. Like that's one is, have some sort of basket system and then, but then I would also need to make a plan. I feel of when that basket gets emptied and the clothes get put, put back on the shelf. Initially, you know, I'll try as hard as I can to just put my clothes away. But if it's just that, like, you know, I'm going to throw them on my floor kind of type of thing. like, I'm in a rush. It's just the clothes are not getting put, put away. I'm going to put them in that bin, but then I need to plan when the task of the clothes bin getting emptied, put back on the shelf, whatever, like when that's going to be done. Like, oh my God. Okay. I just, I need a million systems and a million plans. And I'm, I'm starting the plans so far have just been to like, I'm not at all near base level because again, the room's not set up and the, like my, there's no shelf to put my things. My bed's not even in my freaking room. So I'm just trying to plan, like, I'm just trying to get the freaking junk dealt with. Um, so yeah, like Sean and I have been both doing our own areas of the house with the junk and I've been getting rid of a lot of my things, but I'll just like sit there. I'll just be stuck a lot of the time too. Like, I'm like, I don't know what to do next. And then like, I hate that. Um, I don't know what it's called being stuck. It's like, okay, I saw this video about ugh, here we here I go again just like talking about ADHD basically the whole episode. I don't know. It's just it's becoming my entire personality now and I didn't want that to happen, but when you haven't realized these things like what it actually really is and you have a word for it now, like you've been doing this your whole life, it is just I think it does just become your personality or like a hyperfixation, like an ADHD hyperfixation. <laughs> Right. But I saw this, um, video. Oh God. Did I just forget? Did I just forget what I was going to talk about? What was the video? It was about ADHD and it had to do. Oh, okay. I can't even remember his name at all, but he has really good videos about ADHD and it's like hypothetical situations. And I just forgot it again. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, it was just about being stuck between, okay, his environment was messy. Like he had to work, right? And he was just stuck because he's like, I need to like have a clean, organized space to work. But I can't, what was it? It was just like, I can't clean the, or I don't have motivation to clean the thing, but I have to work and the thing needs to be clean. And then I can't, like, it just was that loop forever. And then, and then he sees his phone and he just grabs his phone and starts scrolling. So that's, yeah, what I feel all the time. It's like the, the stuckness is not knowing how to get the task done. And I don't know, I guess I just have to keep relearning the simple annoying things, but I, I finally today, like I, like I said, like I sat on doing my work of the junk with the garbage bin thing, like for three days now, like it came on Friday and it's Sunday and I just started actually doing things. Like, I don't know what the hell I was doing the other days. I was feeling lethargic and just feeling sucky. I guess I started a little bit yesterday before I started, I just got like, or I did a little bit and then I, I start feeling all tired and I feel like that's a bit of a trauma response or just like a mental fatigue thing. Like I'm just the whole time, maybe I'm overthinking it. I finally got to the point where I made a dent enough. Like I did enough stuff to feel confident that I can actually do it. Like the whole time I was probably just believing I don't know how to do that. I can't do this. And it just is so annoying in life when like the hardest things to do are, it's just, it's like, it, it only gets easier when you've already done something. Like it's just the hard, it's like being, the ultimate underdog, I guess. And you feel like everything almost, you feel like everything's like stacked against you. That's the hardest to get out of and to have any feeling of like you need some accomplishment feeling to like have motivation stuff, at least for that's my experience with the ADHD stuff. It's really annoying when you are just like, you know, my environment is messy and stuff, so I need to clean it to be more productive, but I don't have motivation to clean it. So I'll try to do work stuff or I'll be productive, but like, I can't because I got to clean it. And like, I don't know. It just, it does sound like excuses and annoyingness, but if you have it, you know, I don't know if this comes from trauma stuff like childhood like emotional trauma or living in chaos and um or yeah maybe there are chemicals that are just off in my brain obviously like something has caused I don't know if I just forever I I'm going to naturally run lower on the dopamine like I'm trying to do the things but it's just so annoying you have to be so on it I feel you have to be so on it so just to do the task of getting the house in order with the junk and stuff. I really had to be very disciplined with my schedule, my sleep, because staying up too late, getting a crappy sleep. Then I was extra demotivated, extra just lethargic, tired, not focused, like ADHD symptoms, even worse with the forgetting, just like getting confused. It's like, where am I like amongst the junk? So much worse when I stay up late. And so I had to like, be really intense with that. And so that's been getting better. And I've, I set alarms for my schedule now on my phone. I would set alarms for different things, but like I have alarms for when I'm supposed to be going to the gym, waking up alarm, obviously that got put off for a while. Cause I was just trying to prioritize sleep as much as I could, but I did wake up before my alarm this morning, I think. And then I like turned the alarm off because I just was felt so tired, right? It just, I hate it. I hate it. I hate being like so tired knowing, you know, if I do get up at eight, I could, I could make myself, but I don't think I'm going to be that productive. Like I'm really tired. I need those few hours of sleep, but then I hate getting started late in the day. Like just that is such a demotivator to me. 
And I, I just feel like this stuff too, there's so much, yeah, there's, you know, dopamine stuff going on in my brain, maybe like lower dopamine, but there is so much that I can be doing to get those levels more in check. One of those big things is my media addiction. So I've been also trying to clamp down on that because that was causing me to stay up too late and also during the day to get off task, you know, and stuff like I was trying to, I was just always doing something, doing tasks. Like I was always watching a thing, trying to watch something while doing a task or be listening to something, but then I'd be distracted by what I was listening to at times. I would start Googling things about the podcast I was listening to, like needing to know the answer or something, or if I didn't know what they were talking about, then I go down a rabbit hole, right? Of some of the podcasts I listen to, it's like influencer drama and stuff like that. And so then they're talking about someone I don't know the situation. And then I have to like figure it out immediately. Like I just rabbit hole, like I don't have to, I don't have to, but it's so habitual and automatic that I forget. It's like literal actual addiction. And I forget, like, I don't know how I got there sometimes. (laughs) Like I have to be so aware and it is just easier to just um, not listen to those things and podcasts. And I did realize how much that was like affecting me and not pumping me up and just like all the negative stuff all the time. I like to indulge here and there with celebrity drama and stuff like that, but being so consumed with that is just, um, a lot and not healthy. And it's also just useless stuff. I like to listen to it to stay in the know, to like give my little two cents, like my little nuanced opinions about things. And, uh, but then, uh, yeah, it's just not serving me because it's cluttering my mind and it's, just affecting my emotions and stuff. Like it's just the same as news news, like just depressing, just negative drama. It's just all sensationalized drama stuff. And it's like meant to give you cheap dopamine hits, but not sustainable, but it's just like hard to fully transition from constantly listening to a lot of that stuff. It's hard to just like shut it all completely off, like all the media and entertainment. So I'm going back to some old habits I had formed and then fell off the bandwagon with, which often happens. But one of them is reserving my phone for the gym. I started to get really stressed about my phone again, like just distracted by it or just like feeling like someone was trying to get a hold of me. I had some family stuff happen that I needed to be more in the know so I went back to having my actual phone on me because I have a, a I have an old phone I use if I do still want to listen to music or podcast that doesn't have my phone data so I don't get like texts from people or I don't even have, yeah, and then I don't have any like messaging apps like Facebook Messenger, whatever apps. Like I can't do, I just can't keep up. There's only like maybe a few people that I message on that one, but like I hate it all. I actually hate it all. I actually hate it. I do and I don't, like, I don't absolutely, like, I cannot be having conversations, guys, on a screen, like a digital, I can have phone conversations, okay, but even then, that gets, like, out of hand, I have a hard time being, like, you know, oh, I actually have this task I should get to, and I just don't like sitting there typing on the phone. I, I I tried to, yeah, like I don't like having text conversations. So I abandoned my phone and people knew to get to me. Like some of my friends, I would check in on my phone here and there, but excuse me, uh, family knew to go through Sean, my partner, like to get to me. And then they stopped trying to have text conversations with me because I just wasn't going to answer. And then I went back to my phone because like I mentioned, there was a family situation, uh, going on. So then I went back to my phone and then it's just, it's gotten too much again. So yeah, one of my things, yeah, that I was doing before that really ended up working out because it was, um, a good time efficient strategy as well was 
going to the gym. So yeah, it, it's, it's good too, because it motivates me to go to the gym every day. Although I do not care. I don't care to check my phone, my actual phone every day at all. Like I, when I was doing this before, like the last time I did this whole, I'm going to check my texts and keep up with people when I'm at the gym, like I wouldn't do it every day. I would do it honestly every third day. And I wanted to do it every fourth day. Like I wanted to just not do it, but I needed to check in. But then, yeah, it sucks if you do check in and then things have sort of piled up and then you feel just this, oh, I got to get through all these sort of messages. It's just like people, can you just like not have text conversations? And I would say, yeah, I'm not good at texting or I, I don't like, I'll just give brief answers to the, like their long paragraphs. And some people, like I did say, yeah, you know, I'm just like not into text conversations. And I would say it like, I hate having to say it cause I feel like rude, but some people just continue. They just don't get the thing, you know, they're neurotic in their own way. And like, I just cannot be this emotional support for people because I did it too much and neglected myself so much so like when someone's just like trying to text at me all their emotional shit it's like I can't I I actually don't have time for this like I don't have time it's like I don't mean to be rude but and I don't even say anything I just don't answer and then I feel it's hard to not care like it's hard to not especially with like deep emotional things like but I just like can't do it I can't I don't have the freaking capacity. So I just try to keep it short and sweet, but I like, I have to skim read sometimes like people that are just going insane with the essay of a text. It's like, I just quickly, like, I feel bad to not, to completely not read text from them. Like, I don't, it's just like so annoying. Okay. <laughs> On that tangent, it's just like thinking about it now. I'm like, oh, Ugh. So anyways, I try to go to the gym every day and then I actually feel free when I have this system for myself that the protocol is you can only use your phone at the gym. But I also, I combine that with my media and stuff. Like I've been loose on that though lately, you know, because I have been spending a lot of time with the junk, like going through the junk, cleaning, whatever, like I can listen to things. I've actually been listening to a lot of ADHD things, like stuff that's like more helpful and not just negative drama bullshit. Excuse me, but I've been like pausing it a lot more. I've been just listening to nothing at times, listen to some of it. Like I've been getting back to myself again, but yeah, I also have been reserving like the gym is like my full indulgence with media time as well and so I don't want people bombarding on that to that space like I don't want to actually check my phone and do my keeping ups with people during my gym stuff half the time because it takes up a portion of my time that I'm wanting to be listening to my fun thing so it's just annoying like, I don't know maybe I have to come up with a new system for that but like I do it because I get anxiety from the phone and the texts and the people. And so when I'm already working out, I'm in a calmer space and like my heart rate can't go. Well, it's, I guess it's already going higher because of the working out. So I don't feel it as much. Like I don't feel as uncomfortable when I'm like opening my phone to see what's what I've got. You know, I feel like I'm able to do it more at the gym because I'm like getting those endorphins dealing with the general anxiety, you know, exercising. So that's like how I've been able to manage. And then also I like it being somewhere out of my freaking house. Like I do not want to bring people's chaotic energy into my space, like in my own home. Like I know it's not real and it's just like on a digital phone, but there's just something about like being consumed with all that stuff while I'm in the space of my house that I feel like I literally can't get away from it. That I, I've, yeah, I, if it's not at the gym, I also like to just check my texts or things like check up with it when I'm literally not home. So I'll be out getting groceries and before I go home, I'm in a parking lot or something and then I'll check my phone before I go home. So 
I'm going to try to stick to that one because I have realized how much of a relief it is for me and like how it takes the thinking out of it because I will just uh, operate a band in my phone completely and I do disappear and I don't, it's annoying for me. I don't want to like every time I feel like disappearing, which is like always, I don't want to have to send a mass text to everyone being like, Hey, by the way, just like taking some time to myself. And, and I'm not going to give an estimated time. I'm not going to give a time frame. So it's not even going to do anything. I guess it's just to let them know, not on my phone right now, but also kind of don't ever want to be on my phone. Like, just don't like, I want to get a landline so bad. I need a landline so bad, but it's not even going to matter. It's like, then I'm just going to be listening to people's messages. And I don't know, I don't have to, but I don't want to just block someone and they're not even doing anything like negative towards me. Like they're just dumping their stuff on me and they just, this is how they are. And they have a lot of trauma and I think it, yeah, a lot of like unresolved stuff that I think they're just like quite neurotic, cannot self-validate. Um, they're a lot older than me, but still cannot self-validate. And like, I just, they need to go to therapy they, and I'm not the therapist. Like, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, but they're like, you know, my family. So it's just like, oh my God. Uh, what else? Yeah. I don't know. That's just what's going on with me. And it's, It's just hard because it's not hard. I'm probably, I'm making it hard in my brain, I guess. It's just like when you're so used to things being a certain way, like I'm going just back to the house organizing my life. Like it affects my whole life. Like every single aspect though. I just talked about say making systems for texts and stuff. Um, I just don't do well in the modern world and I'm quite bitter about that and annoyed and I think a lot of people though are in my boat, ADHD or not, a lot of people are overwhelmed by the modern world. Like it's, it's really unnatural for us. I feel as like biologically, you know, we're not meant to be, I don't know. We're really like industrialized and modern worldized, you know, that we've gotten away from nature and all that stuff. And our brains were not meant to be in communication with all of these different people with the touch of a screen. And it, like, it's just, especially for anxious people, especially for anxious people, it is just hell sometimes. Like there's perks to it. I really enjoy learning things and I love being able to look up how to do things like, you know, I'm trying to fix something. I can find a YouTube video about that exact thing that I need to fix. But another thing that I actually realized recently is it, <laughs> the internet being like the, having all the info right at my disposal too, has like been making my life a little bit probably too easy that it's stifling my creativity in ways that I'm not thinking for my own self. And like, I had a realization because I've been trying to figure certain things out, like for systems, for things, right. Trying to hack my sleep. I'm very sensitive to light. It's really hard. I found in all my research, it's really hard to find a window covering like blackout curtain type of system that's actually true blackout if you have curtains like all this light comes around the side of the curtains there's these like roller shades but again the light comes out the side of the roller shades like there's it seems to be this really custom fancy thing to have like shutters that actually they're maybe in a frame themselves so they are like fully blackout um, covering like all corners of the window. And then I get into like issues too, where it's like, okay. So it's, yeah, it's just, it's such a custom thing. I just couldn't even, I found one company that has shutter, like it's a, I think you slide it horizontally and there's an encasing that like the material 
of the shutter, whatever, I don't know, it's like a, what's the shutter itself material? I don't know, plastic shutter thing, and it, but it sits within an encasing so that's like completely flush or whatever to the window. Like you put this frame thing like on your window, it sticks to it. Like this one company I found that has something that's actually total blackout, the design of it, they don't, they don't ship to Canada. So that's like, okay, that's a no go. So I thought I'll have to make my own. Like, that's where I feel like my creativity has been stifled. Like, you know, I, I, I do not like delving into the fear of the unknown. Like I don't, but I think I do like that. And I just, I need to let myself mess up. Like I, I thought, oh my God, it's going to be so fun to like actually try to make my own things, like my own hacks. I have a miter saw that I can use now to aid in these construction endeavors. And because yeah, it's like, there aren't going to be things that are going to work perfectly for me in my situation. They aren't even going to exist or I'm not going to find a single YouTube video about it. So maybe I can be the first person that like shows the invention I made. So I thought that's pretty fun. But it's just, there's always an issue. There's always an issue too. It's like, for the longest time, I was like, this type of a shutter, like I explained for the window, like that's perfect. It'll make my windows black out. Um, I, cause I could, there's other options kind of, like you can try to like do an actual hotel style, like very big, heavy, thick, long curtains that like sit, I guess, flush against the wall enough, but I want to get my humidifier going again and long curtains when I've used it with a humidifier, you get a lot of water, um, that settles like behind the curtain and it wrecks your walls kind of, or you get like water stains. So I was like, okay, I think long curtains, not, not going to be a thing. <sighs> so then I'm like, okay, this shutter thing's it, this shutter thing's it. And then thought that I thought of all the variables because I'm usually extremely detail oriented, but didn't think about how, like, how am I going to have my window open? How am I going to get airflow? Because the shutter is going to be on the inside of the window. I did look into an outdoor shutter thing in Greece. And I think other parts of Europe, they have these very nice uh, shutter things. It's like a whole pulley contraption and it's actually outside of the house so you can still or wait no would that stop air oh my god I'm so dumb it's it's so dumb it doesn't even matter it doesn't even matter whether it's on the inside or outside of the air the window it's gonna stop the airflow anyways unless there's like little slits but that would let light in okay so yeah, it's like, unless it's some sort of a breathable material that it does not let light in, but it lets airflow in, that's where the curtains are going to have to be a thing again. Maybe like, maybe I'll just try to get like really flush curtains. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Guys. It's so annoying. It's so annoying because in the winter it'll be okay. Like I'm not gonna have the window open, but in the summer it gets so hot. There's no air conditioning. I'm going to need that window wide open. A lot of times I like to put a fan in the window so I get the air from outside blown in the cool air. And like, I don't have a design for that. I don't have a design that can keep the airflow going through, but that completely blacks out my window. So I don't have the light that so easily wakes me up. Like, unless it's like some type of a curtain thing. And it, like, it's just, it's just like, it goes in circles, it goes in circles and it never, there feels, this feels like there's like not a solution. So that's a system that I have not figured out yet, but maybe I will eventually. And then there's just like so many more issues with the, even if the airflow gets in, it's like, do I want it to be because the, there's, these little bugs are still getting through my screen. Like I taped all the holes in my screen on my window and I was still painting in my room and it was getting really hot because I had a really bright light and it's still summer and it's paint. Like it's toxic to my brain. I don't want to be breathing in those fumes. So I got to have the window open, but these little tiny, little tiny, tiny flies 
still manage to get in through the actual screen. I guess they just fit annoying as hell. And they'd come in and perch on my freshly painted wall. And there was two of them that landed on the top of my wall. And I was just like hoping they were just chilling for the night but they're still there like four days later. So I'm going to have to peel them off the wall. It's just so annoying. I guess they couldn't get off. Like I, th- I thought they also perched when the paint had like dried a little bit at least so they didn't stick, but this is just me complaining again, I guess. Um, and people are just going to probably be like, this is just like, okay, what's the point of you? Com- like, no one gives a shit. No one wants to hear you complain, whatever. Okay. I'm fully self-aware of that and I'm not caring. I'm choosing not to care. Like, obviously I still care for me to bring that up, but I'm choosing not to, I'm trying not to care what people think. And I think, um, I don't know. I'm going to end this episode now because like I got nothing else and, but yeah, I I do think this maybe was the worst one yet, but I'm accepting that and it's going to be okay. And I don't know what the hell I'm going to call it because I don't want to say that it's like another ADHD episode. But maybe, <laughs> maybe that's what I'll actually end up calling it. I don't know. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Um, Bye.